Today's lesson is lesson 9-1, property of radicals. We're actually going to take this lesson and split it up into two parts. So this is the first part of this lesson. What we're going to do today is um, find some properties of radicals. We're going to simplify those expressions. Now, as with fractions and algebraic expressions, we always want to have them in simplest form. Now, let's talk about the parts of a radical before we go ahead and get started. Now, when we have a radical, it can come in different forms. So the whole thing is called our radical. The term inside the radical here is what we call the radican. <clears throat> Now, this is the index, and for this unit, we're going to only be doing square roots, so you will not see a number there because it will automatically default to square, because it will automatically default to square roots. <clears throat> now, the three in front is what we call the coefficient, so a term you are very familiar with. So, this is the coefficient of the radical. Now, in order to simplify these, there are a few rules. The radicands cannot have fractions, and we can't have a radical in the denominator. So, let's take a look at what this means. Now, one of the first things we're going to look at is the property of square roots. In order for this to go a little bit quicker, knowing those square roots or the perfect square numbers are going to save you a lot of time. So what I'm going to do is I want to simplify the square root of 147. Now, to make this a little bit simpler, what I can do is get a list of my perfect squares and divide until I find a perfect square factor. In that case, when I do, I get 49 times 3. Now I can split that up to the square root of 49 times the square root of 3, and the square root of 49 is 7, so I have 7 square roots of 3. Now, I apologize for B, there is a little typo here. So we're going to find the square root of 25x to the fifth power, not squared, so I apologize. What I want to do now is look for perfect squares, and I actually have three of them here. So we have 25 times x squared, times x squared times x. So the square root of 25 here is 5. The square root of x is x. The square root of x squared is x. And then this one is going to stay in the radical. So I end up with 5x squared times the square root of x. Because I have x times x, which gives me that x squared. So I pulled out all of the perfect squares. Next, it is your turn. Please hit pause. And when you're done, come back and check your work. All right, how did you do? Now, let's take a look at the quotient of property of squares. Now, if you recall, we mentioned earlier that we can't have a fraction within a radical or a radical in our denominator. Here's why. Because if I have the square root of 3 fourths, it's the same as the square root of 3 over the square root of 4. And we cannot have a radical here in a denominator when we are simplifying our radicals. So let's take a look. So I have the square root of 1136. So I'm going to find the square root of 11 and the square root of 36. Now, 11 doesn't have any perfect square factors, so that will remain the same. And the square root of 36 is 6. My final answer is the square root of 11 over 6. Now, let's take a look at B. The square root of 144 over n squared. So I have the square root of 144 over the square root of n squared. And the square root of 144 is 12. The square root of n squared is n. So my final answer here is 12 over n. All right, it's your turn. You know what to do. Go ahead, hit pause. Try these on your own. 
When you're done, come back and check how you did. Our last example here is rationalizing the denominator. Now in the previous lesson we learned that we cannot have a radical in our denominator. Unfortunately, these don't have perfect square factors and I cannot find the square root of 2x without getting a decimal. So what I want to do is get rid of this 2x. Now let's review for just a second. If I have a fraction, 2 thirds, and I multiply that by 1, which is 2 halves, I end up with 4 6. These are what we call equivalent fractions. We're going to take the same idea and use it over here, multiplying by a 1. Any number divided by itself is 1. So what I want to do is get rid of this radical here. So what I'm going to do is multiply it by itself. Remember, two numbers by itself are going to give us a perfect square. So now, what does that look like? So now, I've got 7 times 2x, so I have 14x. And then here, if you think about it, I end up with 4x squared. 2 times 2 is 4x times x is x squared. Those are now perfect squares, so I have 14x over 2x, equivalent radicals. All right, so it is your turn. Go ahead and hit pause and do 9, 10, 11, and 12. When you're done, check your work. All right, nice job. You can go ahead and get started on today's assignment. Please let me know and reach out if you have any questions.